Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. There's been a lot of interest in tornadoes and storm chasing with the release of Twisters this summer. Well, now we've got a really interesting, uh, well put together documentary that's made about storm chasers. And we're going to talk to the creator of that. Today we're talking to Martin Licious. He created the documentary Chasers of Tornado Alley Touching the Sky. So, Martin, I, I guess before we get too deep into the documentary, what sparked your interest in storm chasing and tornadoes? Well, growing up in North Texas, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, to ignore the weather. Uh, you know, it gets pretty loud around here, especially in the spring in terms of a lot of thunder and wind. And I think when I was a kid growing up, um, I was really interested in that. And we lived right down the street from Harold Taft and Channel 5, uh, the station in Fort Worth uh, in BC. And um, so I followed his weather cast quite a bit. And he had that old fashioned radar, uh, black and white radar. And I thought that was really interesting. And so that's kind of how it started when I was a kid. So you've been chasing for a long time. For people that may have just think storm chasing is like what they see in the movies, how different is real life storm chasing compared to what people would see in Twisters per se? A lot of storm chasing is just sitting around or maybe while we're waiting for a storm to develop, we'll play some football or throw the baseball around or frisbee or something like that. So it's a lot of driving and it's a lot of waiting. And of course, all that's cut out in the, the movie, uh, in the movies that you watch because it wouldn't be very interesting. But uh, a, lot, a lot of it is just waiting. Doing forecasting, um, you'll see in some of the movies, they don't really do much forecasting, if any. And uh, we do spend quite a bit of time forecasting and now casting, which is short-term forecasting. So. Um, and tracking, you know, a lot of that's left out of the movies. Um, you know, the, the science and the technology. So that's the main difference is that, that um, real storm chasing is, act is more real than the movies. So you go out not just see the storms, but you're shooting amazing photography of it and videos. What made you want to put together this documentary? Well, I wanted people to see what storm chasing is really like. You don't really get to see that at all in the movies, on TV, or even YouTube. You know, a lot of the storm chasers there, you, you see them uh, tracking a tornado, or maybe they're inside of a tornado. And uh, it is very exciting, but that's not, you don't really get to see what storm chasing is really like. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to basically take viewers on a storm chase with me and and so they could see what it was like the the visuals in this documentary are amazing and i see the camera there in the background with you and for somebody that's been out trying to take pictures of storms video it's not easy to do what what equipment are you using and how's your setup to get these amazing shots of these storms so we produced the film in 4k so we uh dci 4k which is a little bit wider than the standard 4k and um the main camera that we used actually is behind me. That's the Sony FS7. It's a great documentary camera, and, and it is, uh, uh, you know, we shot it on DCI 4K. We also use some other uh, special gear, like a 16K video system that I built, and uh, and motion picture film as well. So you'll see different different formats used, but but the output is is, is 4K. I wanted I wanted people to really enjoy the cinematography. One cool thing that I, I really loved in the documentary is not just your story. You talked to some of the biggest names in storm chasing, you know, as a meteorologist seeing Chuck Doswell in the film. I mean, how, how cool is that to kind of get their side and view of all this as well? Well, I did want to talk to a variety of storm chasers, uh, Chuck Doswell being one of them. Uh, Chuck is one of the early uh, professional chasers and get the perspective on storm chasing, of course, Tim Marshall, um, Jennifer Dunn at the Weather Service in Fort Worth, and uh, wanted to get different perspectives from the different age groups, and and all of these storm chasers do different things. You know, we have researchers, we have um, we have forecasters with the Weather Service, we have uh, storm chasers with Tempest Tours. So I wanted to get the different the different uh, angles on that. So it's not only stunning to look at, very educational as well, and teaches a lot of terms and stuff. Do you have a kind of a target audience that you're trying to get to with this documentary? Yeah, I think uh, a couple of audiences. Uh, first of all, of course, regular storm chasers, I think would enjoy it just because it's 
something that they have a passion about. But I think it's mostly for people that don't really know much about storm chasing and to give them a different perspective than they normally see. Before we dive more into it, uh, let folks know where exactly they can find this documentary. Well, the documentary, the best place to go is to realstormchasers.com. And uh, you can read the synopsis, watch the trailer, and uh, and then see where it's being shown right now. And currently, that's going to be on Prime Video in HD and on Vimeo at vimeo.com on 4K. In, in the documentary, you had, had a phrase in there where it said that supercells are the, the cinema in the sky. You know, a lot of folks always say they, they want to see a tornado trying to get as close to. To me, seeing a supercell th storm from a distance may be even more amazing. Uh, explain to people just what that look of that monster storm sometimes can look like in the sky. You know, a lot of focus is put on the tornado and tornadoes are pretty amazing, but some of the supercells that we see out there are more photogenic and more interesting to look at than a lot of tornadoes that we see. And basically what it is is a big updraft that's rotating and in, a lot of times it has a twisted look to it with striations uh, on the updraft tower and the light is usually really nice late in the day when they're most common and they're almost surreal. It's almost like when you see one, if the lighting is right, it doesn't even look like it's real. It looks like something that maybe came from outer space. So you talked about how you wanted to talk to different styles of storm chasers. You really highlight the importance of storm spotters. How, how important are they to, into the entire kind of warning process and keeping people safe with storms? They are the eyes and ears of the Weather Service. Uh, weather Service has radar, yes, they do. And that's very helpful, but really the most helpful source of information is from storm spotters. Storm spotters don't get paid. They're volunteers for the community and they're out there telling the weather service exactly what they're seeing in real time, and that's absolutely critical. How, how much in the time that you've been chasing has technology really changed and evolved, and how much does that make it easier for you out chasing nowadays? It's certainly nice to be able to get uh, weather data in your car. It's, it's mobile weather technology and uh, to get forecast data and to get radar data. Um, and that has made it a lot easier. However, um, there are a lot of days that we see tornadoes and big storms that other people don't see because we go beyond technology and actually do forecasting. So you still really need to know how to forecast. And I know you've had a long career doing this. Are there, uh, is there one or two that just really stick out as some of the, the wildest chases that you've been out on? Every once in a while, Mother Nature will give you something that's pretty amazing. I think um, certainly in uh, May of 20, uh, 2004, we intercepted a storm near Harper, Kansas. And that's actually in the documentary. It was a cyclic tornadic supercell. So what it, that means is that it cycles. You'll have one tornado that starts to weaken while another one develops and so on. It keeps doing that over and over and over again. And that per particular storm, we saw quite a few tornadoes. I think I saw two tornadoes on the ground three times, and I saw three tornadoes on the ground once or twice, which is pretty amazing. So if somebody was, say, interested in becoming a storm chaser, I know a lot of people are probably going to want to run out and do it after watching the movie. What, what uh, advice would you give them on what they need to learn and do before trying to go out and do something like that? If you want to become a storm chaser, I think the first thing you should do is become a storm spotter. Go to the National Weather Service training. It's free. Maybe go to a couple classes and learn about storms and safety and how storms evolve. That's the number one thing. Become a storm spotter trained by the Weather Service. And then two, when you're out there spotting or chasing, be very, very safe when it comes to driving because I think that's really the biggest risk when you're storm spotting or chasing. Again, uh, the documentary is uh, The Chasers of Tornado Alley Touching the Sky. Uh, Martin, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And uh, I, I watched the documentary. It's amazing. I recommend anybody that gets a chance to go watch it. Thank you.